Now that it's official and the number one player in the country is spoken for, what does this mean for Kirby Smart's 2024 class? Well, it puts them in the mix to sign the number one ranked recruiting class in 24-7 sports history as they chase after that Texas A&M class from a couple cycles ago. You have the number one player in the country in the fold, and I think that he is going to be one of the best peer recruiters that we've seen in a long time, too. A source said a bunch of chips will fall now that Dylan Rayola is in the fold. He's a guy that's wired into recruiting, always uh, seeing who he should hit up and help recruit to Georgia. And he's been recruiting behind the scenes for the Bulldogs for a long time. So I think the magnitude of having Dylan Rayola in the fold uh, uh, makes it even more enticing for his peers. A program that's already won two straight national championships has crushed it in the NFL draft. These guys also like to play with their friends on the next level. And Dylan Rayola is everybody's friend, it seems like, here in the 2024 cycle. Steve, you mentioned the number one ranked class, but is this a group that could potentially challenge what Texas A&M did two years ago, highest ranked recruiting class of all time? You look at the visitors list uh, on the Georgia site, it's pretty star studded. So do they have a, ch a chance to top what Jimbo did a few years ago? Well, you look at the top of our rankings, Andrew, and Georgia seems to be on the short list for just about all those young men. They're even gonna have a big recruiting weekend this weekend. It's the scavenger hunt on campus. Top ranked receiver Jeremiah Smith's gonna be there. KJ Bolden, number one safety in the land's gonna be there. Jaden Riddell, one of the top tight ends, most coveted players in the country. Uh, 24 7, top 247 linebacker Justin Williams is coming up from the Lone Star State. That's just kind of the tip of the iceberg that the guys that George is in on, from Dylan Stewart to Sammy Brown to Ryan Wingo, those are all five stars guys, as you know. And and so I think that uh, Georgia is, is very much in the mix to finish with that top recruiting class of all time when you're talking about 24-7 sports history. Now, speaking of history, we're used to talking about Georgia as number one, obviously being at the peak of college football the last two seasons, but also in the recruiting world, they're, they're used to landing top talent. I mean, you think about Georgia just dominating the NFL draft lately with some of those top defensive players being selected, uh, but how could this commitment maybe help the Bulldogs bring in some high-end offensive talent to match that star power on defense? Well, those are some of the guys that uh, Rayola's keyed in on, some of the guys that he's really built some good relationships with. But Georgia, uh, uh, they've obviously been recruiting at a high level before. When you talk about who's on that staff, Del McGee's one of the best running back uh, coaches, in, uh, running back coach recruiters in the country. Same goes for Brian McClendon at receiver. Todd Hartley is as good a recruiter as there is in the country. And then Coach Searles has been doing a fabulous job for them uh, on the offensive line. And that's just the on-field coaches, the off-field support that Georgia has from their recruiting department is second to none. And then now you have Dylan Rayola, who's going to be helping the recruiting efforts. Uh, I mean, they're, they're already in the mix for some of these elite players right now. And uh, recruiting's a game of inches. You never know how these inches are going to add up. But Dylan Rayola's commitment today is certainly a nice inch uh, for Georgia as they continue forward here in this recruiting cycle. Well, Steve, I think it's notable, right? Uh, Kirby Smart has signed more defensive five stars in the past two years than he has since he's been in Athens, right? I think Dylan Rayola absolutely would help them with Jeremiah Smith, Ryan Wingo, two, two uh, blue chip wide receivers there. Does Georgia have a chance at getting Jeremiah Smith now that Dylan Rayola is committed? I know, Andrew, you hinted at that a little bit, but Steve, what do you think? Well, I think he's going to be a tough flip from Ohio State. You know, we talked about this on the recruiting show last Thursday and whip around. You know, Brian Hartline with the way that he builds relationships with top targets in addition to the production on the field. I mean, Ohio State just had the first receiver taken in this draft. They're trending to have the first receiver taken in the next draft. Those Buckeyes receivers are doing a fantastic job in the NFL. I think that Jeremiah Smith knows uh, what he has going for him at Ohio State. But I said last week, I think that Georgia, if I'm marking a school that has a chance to flip them, they would be the biggest threat to Ohio State. He's going to be back on campus this weekend, has great relationships with Coach McClendon, Dylan Rayola, and people in that program. And, and so Georgia, they, they boast a heck of an on-field resume too with two straight national titles and the player development. So they're the school that I would view as the biggest challenger to Ohio State, but certainly not ready to say today that he's going to flip to the Bulldogs. But we'll see what, what, what starts happening after this weekend's visit and beyond.
All right, we have established the gravity of this commitment for the Bulldogs, but just to kind of put it into perspective, this is the first number one top 247 quarterback that Georgia has ever landed. He's just the sixth five-star quarterback in program history. Rayola is also the first number one prospect for Georgia in nearly a decade and becomes the ninth five-star offensive player to pick the dogs since 2016. So let's bring in someone on the ground to get some coverage of this massive recruiting news. Let's welcome in Jordan Hill from Dogs 24-7. Big day for you, Jordan. Georgia landing the number one player in the country. And the last time they did that was 2015 when they got Trenton Thompson. This feels a little bit different than that, though, with it being a quarterback. I mean, what is the level of excitement and enthusiasm around the program since landing Dylan Rayola just a few hours ago? I think you could tell just by social media on the whole, just the reactions that players had, the the uh, the current recruits, uh, you know, signaling that, hey, more is coming and we'll see if that winds up happening. But current players as well sharing their excitement. You know, um, it's funny to compare this year to last year. I think it was mentioned earlier. Georgia was really in the mix with Arch Manning uh, for a while, felt pretty good. Obviously, Arch winds up choosing Texas instead. But now uh, Georgia gets their guy. He get you know they get the top player in the 2024 class. Um, one of two quarterbacks they plan on signing because they really really needed help at the position. Just with only three scholarship guys going into this fall, um, I think it played out uh, just the way Georgia would have it. There's a lot of excitement, and uh, as we've talked about, there's room for a whole lot more. They've got a chance to put together a very very special 2024 class. And uh, it's going to be a fascinating summer because I'm sure that there are more dominoes to come. Jordan, last cycle they chase after Arch Manning. Obviously, he ends up in Texas, right? They get Ryan Puglisi committed. He's a guy that's in our top 247. But just to land Dylan Rayola, number one player, number one quarterback, how important was that for Kirby Smart uh, and new offensive coordinator Mike Bobo? Well, I think it answers a lot of questions right away. You know, there was obviously, and I think understandably, some concern from Georgia fans with what the second era of the Mike Bobo uh, tenure as offensive coordinator would look like. And right away, he came on board. You know, he had been an analyst last year, but there was still a lot of positive buzz when it came to Dylan Rayola and what the chances Georgia had of landing him, even with Todd Munkin leaving for the NFL. Um, I think the fact that uh, you know, Mike had the connection uh, with Dylan's dad, Dom. Uh, the fact that Dom had played with Matt Stafford and, and uh, Mike had coached Matt Stafford when he was at Georgia. I think that was nothing but positive. But, you know, it sort of builds toward what we've seen the last two years, really, with Georgia. You know, the belief early on when Kirby Smart was it was defense, 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 and then just doing just enough on offense. And, you know, credit to Kirby Smart and that staff when they hired Todd Munkin in 2020 really opened things up and showed they weren't weren't scared to go after, you know, points and lighten up the scoreboard. And they've done a good job of that. And as I wrote in a column today, you think about the success they've had. They're on the mountaintop of college football right now, and they did that with a former walk-on. And a lot of credit is due to Stetson Bennett. But you consider now they have the top quarterback, the top player in the 2024 cycle. You'd have to think that the upside is very, very high in Athens right now. Yeah, Jordan, I see a lot of uh, dejected fans uh that aren't fans of the Bulldogs in the chat right now going, ah, oh, Georgia's just going to three-peat here. It feels like that's uh, kind of where they're headed here. Uh, but we mentioned Ryan Puglisi. You know, while he's not the number one player at his position, he's still a very talented quarterback. I mean, he's ranked number 12 in the country per our rankings. So what does Rayola's commitment mean for him? Well, you know, I don't think it's a surprise. And I think a lot of credit is due to Ryan because, you know, I think Georgia staff has been very upfront with him, very candid that they planned on taking two quarterbacks. They really had to just because, again, they did not sign a quarterback last year. Uh, you've got three going into this year, probably not going to have all three back in 2024, just because we know, especially in the transfer portal era, how consistently we see guys leave, guys who aren't playing right away. And I wouldn't be surprised if that winds up happening after the 2023 season. So uh, Ryan said all the, all the right things since this announcement. I've seen a few different outlets had 
I spoken to him and he said, you know, basically I want to be a bulldog and I still plan to be uh, a bulldog and credit to him too, because this is going to be a competition uh, no matter who winds up coming in in 2024. So I think Ryan Puglisi understands that you know, there's going to be a lot of attention paid to Dylan, but if he goes out there and he outplays Dylan, then he'll get a chance to play a role or, or kind of beat him on the depth chart going into 2024. So I think George is in really good shape. I think they were really, up front with these guys when it came to bringing in multiple quarterbacks. And I think that's why they are where they sit today, where it looks like both of those guys are going to be on board by the time we get to the signing periods. Well, Stetson Bennett had to beat out some guys with uh, stars next to their name to to take that job. Uh, Jordan, you touched a little bit on it, uh, the the relationship between uh, Rayola's his father and and Mike Bobo. You know, just Todd Monken was there and, 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 you know, for him to leave and, and they still get this thing done with Dylan Rayola. I mean, is this all Bobo? I mean, does he deserve a ton of credit or, or is this kind of the entire staff there in Athens? Well, I think Mike deserves a lot of credit. I don't think he did it alone. I think Kirby smart, and especially at a position like quarterback, you're going to have so many people that, you know, lending a voice and, and sort of selling the program. But I think Mike does deserve a lot of credit. Uh, as I'd mentioned earlier, you know, I think a lot of people were kind of lukewarm on him returning to offensive coordinator, and he'd had a lot of success in that eight-year run that he had from 07 to 14. Uh, but I think he showed right away that he's ready to go, that he's going to recruit hard, that uh, they're going to have a lot of success. As crazy as the last couple years have been, as far as the production of these offenses, they never touched the scoring uh, record that Mike Bobo's last offense in Georgia set. Uh, points per game is still a a program record so um, it's funny to me after Mike was promoted I talked to David Andrews who's been in the league for a while who played for Mike and he said go look back at those teams that Mike was a coordinator for Uh, obviously they had talent he said but you know they do not have the talent that's in Athens right now that they have so much more to work with and that Mike's got a chance to do something special he has got a quarterback now and uh, we'll see what that looks like in 2024 once he gets there expectations were already high certainly through the roof now jordan thanks for joining us today absolutely well as we anticipate this is going to be a very busy time this is probably just the beginning of an eventful recruiting cycle for the bulldogs so be sure to check out dogs 24 7 you can read jordan's work there also highly recommend you become a vip member for exclusive information on all things georgia